Why did Galway go from terrible against Wexford, average against Carlo, to being so good against Kilkenny? I'd say they just, I'd say maybe a lot of it they heard their luck now during the week, but maybe something to do with that. They're probably getting slack from every side, but I'd say they all just kind of stood up and the intensity, sure, you could see from the throwing, which was way, way higher. Um, the lads that were maybe underperforming the half back line, McInerney and, 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 and full back Burke kind of really up to Dave Burke midfield. I heard comments about having no legs and he was up and down. And the, the, the other big thing I think was they got a focal point centre forward in Mannion. Like he's probably as close as Galway have to Joe Canning. So he was out receiving the ball off lads, setting up the play and, and very calm on the ball, very similar to what Joe Cannon would do. And then it's still allowed wheeling inside to do the damage he does and he kind of looks just un, unmarkable really. Like. And what about Johnny Glynn then? You've, you were in college with him, you marked him. Why was he so unstoppable today? He's often been used on the inside line, but out in the half forward line, he seemed more effective. Well, I think if you look at the Kilkenny half back line today, they're actually, for Kilkenny half back line, they're not too big. And they're not overly, you know, they're, they're tough men, but they're not overly physically huge and strong. So I think it probably suited him today. Whereas if he was going in against a Kilkenny half back line of old that were physically a bit stronger or cuter, or whatever you want to call it, then he mightn't have found it as easy. So I think it was just a perfect game for him. But he's a he's a class player anyway. Like okay, he's not going to take a lot of scores. But I mean, obviously Galway have enough lads to do that. But he'll set it up. And at the end of the day, if he's running down the throat of the fence, which is what he does, he doesn't have to take scores because he'll go right through the heart of the team if they don't go to him. Then he just sets it up. Things that stood out for me: Joseph Cooney going in wing back, yeah. snapping ball out of the air. So that's a massive platform. Then the fact that Jason Flynn. He was going poorly on the freeze. Missed, like it's not just that he missed them, but he missed them poorly where people were sighing. Yeah. But he actually set up two goals and he kept going. Whereas Galway teams, like the way they've been going this year, I expect them to fall flat in their face. But they kept going. I thought, yeah, well, I thought from from the first few minutes, I didn't think they were going to fall flat in their face. They looked more like 2017 than they did at all last year. I'd say. Mm. Like there, there was that intensity. Like they were fair physical today. Whereas last year they were nearly getting hunted down. Whereas I thought they were yes or today they were they were the hunters and they were after Kilkenny lads. Now it was a fair battle. The Kilkenny lads no bother. Maybe TJ Reid did an awful lot of work for him. But um, Galway today I thought today I thought it looked dangerous for the first time in a long time. Mm. Do you think before this things had fallen lovely for Kilkenny that they went from a team that people weren't fancying them like got relegated in the league and so yeah. far as you're relegated. So they started off with Dublin who aren't probably have a full hand either the in Nolan Park the, the, the Kilkenny, like. and then they had Carlo so all of a sudden maybe everyone built them up to today Kilkenny are flying and they can't be stopped today well I think we probably everyone did because you're saying geez they're tipping along lovely but I suppose you know and they did okay in the league when they had a lot of people missing Like they did, I know they got relegated but they were very competitive in, in a lot of the matches um, but I think what they're saying there like the physical presence mightn't be what it was before I mean with the best will in the world you're trying your best but like you know, a couple of younger players in the full back line and probably three smaller lads in the half back line. It's just it's just not as easy to be as forceful as you were before. Like mm. like T J Reid, I mean, he's by to me by far the best player in the country now. Like I mean he's been mar- man marked every day, like the way we're giving out maybe Aston Gleason has been man marked, Tony Kelly is being man marked. This lad is getting worse for the last few years and it doesn't actually matter what way the ball comes to him, he's just unbelievable. So I mean, if he got an injury, I don't know what they'd actually do. Because Richie Hogan, like, you've had a lot of back injuries. Richie Hogan, it looks like he just didn't quite get into the game. And maybe, like, how debilitating is a back injury? I didn't think he was as... Jeez, I thought he was at least making him click around the middle, I thought, when he came on. Maybe we're looking at different things, but, jeez, I I thought he was at least linking up. Now, see, when he got the ball a few of the times, I thought that maybe he's he's under pressure. Because, look, you know the way Richie Hogan would be twisting and turning Mm. and getting down over ball and... You know, maybe not the way he used to be able to do it. So it is very, very, it's very hard when you have a sore back and you don't even know what's wrong with it, really. And you're trying to get down over balls and you can just feel it. And you just don't have the same strength. What about the um, what about the red cards? Like Paul Murphy went off on two yellows. John Hanbury got a straight red and then two yeah. yellows for Jerry Elbert. Um, I, th- I thought Paul Murphy's like, do you know what? If, if your man had caught the ball, it still would have been a fair old body-to-body collision um, maybe it was probably uh, you could see the ref saying that it was for a few fouls yeah. so um, probably probably right enough he won't like me saying that but, um, then Hambrys again it was nearly on the shoulder there but it did look it did look like he had the hurling around the neck it ref looked looking poor. to even it up a small bit uh, I don't know was he I think they're t- you know 
you, I don't think for, you would give a straight red just to even it up like that at this level. Unbelievable uh, herd of cows coming in behind us as well. Want to be interviewed? No, they're not uh, so happy. <laughs> um, the like, do, would you put Galway in with a shout of the All Ireland again now because Canning will be back sooner rather than later and bar a complete collapse they're at least through to the All-Ireland series I definitely would I, uh, because Limerick look we're talking about them but Limerick looked outstanding today as well Tip are looking pretty good but I don't think Tip have seen the intensity that was shown out of four teams today yet so it's it's very it's it's very it's an unknown now I think because Galway showed some bite today and what about Limerick then they, like Clare started off the first day beat Waterford by a point and both teams have been absolutely hammered by everyone since how much of Limerick's performance is down to Clare being poor? I, I, I think Limerick looked on another level today. I think they looked, if a lot of teams were in front of them, they would have rolled over them. Everything was different for them. Even the first day poor, they got themselves back on track against Waterford. But even it was night and day between the way they performed today uh, than they did against Waterford. They were cracking. They were, they were so quick on every break, every breaking ball. Their tackling, to me, is the best in the country. Like it's legal and you just can't get away from them. They're, they're rash like and I think they're so so difficult to play against and I think the the criticism they got the first day is probably the worst thing that's happened for any team afterwards. They're so physical like uh, and also the fact that John Kiley can drop Dermot, or Darrow Donovan and Dermot Burns the first day and he gets mm-hmm. a response and then this time he brings back in Dermot Burns and drops Dan Morrissey. It's incredible now because he'll have them all fighting for jerseys. Shane Flanagan as well, you know, kind of looking for... Like, that, that's what I suppose everyone was saying at the end of last year. And I suppose when Kilkenny were, were doing pretty well and Dublin are doing well now, what's, what, like, how else can you motivate people but by having them endanger their position? Mm. Otherwise, the natural thing is to feel like, you know, you don't even want to, but a lot of people can feel a bit comfortable with their position, can't they? So he put the fright on him um, and he, he rotated a lot during the league and I suppose with a, with a view to say well if you're not performing the championship I've seen who can actually perform and, and wing back they've made a change already and they're kind of saying right well we'll put a lad maybe who did very well in the league straight in because they can't really judge on training now but you can say well in the league this guy was well up to it mm. uh, What about Clare though? They, I think they created like 23 chances in the whole game mm. which like is absolutely terrible they've lost their two games by 13 points and I think it was 17 points so I, think I mean they've completely fallen flat from all our semi aren't they? What, what have they copped on to? Have they cop, copped on to the fact that they can isolate? There's like half their team are fairly average players and then there's some excellent players. They have some excellent players but like are they using them in, in, in the right way? Like I think to me Claire is still playing that way that they want to play. Like you can't forget that the, the management were over them when they won that 21 three times and they were playing that sort of style where we'll push back, we'll try and bring Podge out to the forward. Maybe he's not playing there but bring our... Uh, fast quickish players out the field and we'll try and get a run on the opposite team and like they're being followed now like Tony Kelly is being followed and there's probably nothing worse for him he's going into a game similar to Austin Gleeson and playing a fro- floating role but they're actually not floating they're being marked like you're a corner forward mm. so you know I'd be looking at that saying maybe it's time to say Tony Kelly you're now a midfielder or I'd start hitting puck outs down on top of him and sometimes it's harder to mark a lad like a like a, a Whelan or like a Bonner Maher who's actually working so hard he's getting into rocks then he's our rocks then he's in them but if a guy's just waiting because that's probably the tactic if he's just been waiting around for maybe the second phase of the play then sometimes it can be easier to mark him but them, themselves even but look at even their corner forward O'Donnell is finding it hard again today because the space is not being left in behind you see him before there's space inside he's doing damage and, and I think people are copping onto it and even like their full forward line looks like they seem to have no space when under massive pressure every time the ball went in whereas Limerick had all day to pop a ball in front of Galan or hang it in front of him as well and he was just eating lads so like why why is there such a difference between the ball going in and the space and time they had I think they know their game better even though it sounds stupid because they're probably in charge the same amount of time but I think they are better at their game than Clare are and it's more of a fluid motion like Limerick are able to work back the field that the half forward line are brilliant at working back and they're also doing damage going forward like how many of the half forwards in Clare are you actually frightened of geez they're they're going to go through and, and do damage whereas um, Hegarty the last two days has been awesome coming out the field but also I, I think he's underrated at times going through on goals obviously people have seen it now but mm. like if I was Tipperary next week I'd be saying I know Morrissey looks like he's maybe the, the quicker the better hurt this lad is so, does so much damage so um, they have a lot of players that can do damage and I don't think Clare naturally with, with little space have that many so I think and as well don't they play an awful lot of uh, variety in their game so mm. you don't know whether to go with them 
sit back, go with him, sit back, and that's a big one for Tip to think about. Do you think Tip uh, can beat this Limerick team? I'd be quite worried in terms of the intensity level because, as well, I think they're going to try and isolate whatever Tip's weaknesses are that we haven't seen exposed so far. Yeah, I actually think Tip are, in a way, lucky to they get this chance now to have a look at them. I was thinking before this um, that Limerick's intensity wasn't going to be high enough, that it might be advantage Tip next week, but Limerick look very much like the All-Ireland champions and they look very hungry. But in a way... Tip haven't been tested very well so far. Oh, like they've they played very well. I I'm delighted how they're going. Uh, their work rate's excellent. Their application, the way they're 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 structured. But as you said, they haven't actually been exploited really. They've been able to keep their their their, their eight at the back nearly. You know. But now you'd you'd think because of one on one battles might be as easily won. Now they're going to be exploited. What are you made of in the half in the quarterback position, fullback position, and 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 it could be good for Liam to actually see it. Who do you think, uh, like, what are you going to do about Aaron Galan? Because full back is always the position that's talked about with Tipperary. Yeah. You're going to be possibly mano a mano against mm. him back there. Paddy Maher will probably try and sit back. But if you're Tip, what are you going to try and do? I'm wondering, I'm wondering, are they going to maybe put a Ronan Maher on him? Um, is it inevitable? I think it's probably inevitable he'll get that type of ball. For the last year, hasn't he got that type of ball every day? Um, and I think they did try Ronan Maher on him in the league. Um, maybe potty somebody like that and, and put somebody else out in the wing like because we've seen Liam and his management team have tried to maybe tinker a little bit during the league and is it for little situations like this um, and they tinkered the, the back line from the first game to the second so I wouldn't be overly shocked if they did no, I wouldn't be surprised just to see James Barry there and they just try and keep that back line but I'd say it could be in their head maybe okay if we're not if we're not ruin, winning the middle third we might need a, a kind of a man marker inside but again Barrett will already be taken up, I imagine, with, with some of the other some of the other faster lads.